Good morning students. Today we will be starting with a new chapter, Formation of the Muslim League. And we will be studying the factors leading to the foundation of the Muslim League. Factors leading to the foundation of the Muslim League. The English had seen how the Hindus and the Muslims had fought shoulder to shoulder during the Great Rising of 1857. So uh, the Britishers are witness of the unity between the Hindus and the Muslims as they had seen in the Great Uprising of 1857. After that, the Indian people also worked together in their mission to end the British rule, which was nothing but a danger signal for the British imperialism. So this unity also led the Indians to fight together against the Britishers to end the British rule in India. And this was just a threat to the Britishers. Hence, the British encouraged the forces of communalism as the only way to wreck the national movement from within. Communalism is pertaining to a particular community. Whether they are Hindus, Muslims, they feel themselves superior, they feel the other inferior and they fight on the basis of communal lines that we are superior and we should exist. So, uh, these Britishers, they encourage the feelings of communalism in the hearts of the Indians to break the unity and to wreck the national movement. If the Indians are united, only then the national movement can go on. If the Indians are not united, the national movement cannot carry on. So that was the reason why the Britishers started to wreck the national movement and they started to create hostility between the Hindus and the Muslims. They branded the national movement as a movement for establishing the Hindu Rashtra in India. The Britishers told the Muslims that this national movement is only for creating a Hindu Rashtra, means a nation which will only include the Hindus. So the Muslims should feel threatened that if a Hindu Rashtra will come over here, then they will be a complete minority and their interests will not be looked after. So this was the reason how. This is how the Britishers created anti-sentiments in the hearts of the Muslims against the Hindus that if you are going to be a part of the national movement and if India is going to achieve freedom then what will happen that, an, that a Hindu Rashtra will be formed. For this purpose they also encouraged the Muslim communalists to found their separate organization Muslim League. So the Britishers encouraged the Muslims to form a separate organization, a separate Muslim organization which is called the Muslim League and this Muslim organization was supposed to look after the interests of the Muslims with the hope that it would keep the Muslims away from the Congress. So the Muslim League was encouraged so that the Muslims can stay away from the Hindus as much as possible because if the Hindus and the Muslims are being united then it's a big threat for the Britishers in India. There were several factors that led to the foundation of the Muslim League or the growth of communalism or the separatist trend of thinking among the Muslims. How the Muslims started to think that they are separate from the Hindus, that they need some different things from the uh, Hindus. They did not think themselves as a nation as a whole and they thought themselves separate from them. How, what were the factors that led to the foundation of the Muslim League that we are going to study now? First, loss of sovereignty by the Muslims. The Muslims were the rulers of India before the English set foot on it. So before the English came here, the Mughal rulers were ruling India and obviously the Mughal rulers were Muslims. The British established their rule after dethroning the Mughal kings in India. So the Britishers came to India they dethroned means they removed the Mughal kings from India and set their own rule. So the Muslims developed bitterness against the English. The Muslims became the tar special target of the English after the Great Rising of 1857. So when the English came here and they dethroned the Mughal kings, the Muslims, it hurt their sentiments and they became very bitter towards the Britishers. So during uh, the Great Uprising of 1857, the Muslims were the special target of the English because they had this enmity between each other. The doors of the government were shut upon them. They lost the confidence of the British rulers who considered them as the most dangerous enemies. So this bit of feelings made the Britishers think that the Muslims are very dangerous enemies of the Britishers and all the government doors were shut upon them. No government facilities or jobs were open for the Muslims. The British tried to win over the Hindus. About 
the policy towards the Muslims, Lord Alan Borer said, the Muslim race is fundamentally hostile to us and therefore our true policy is to conciliate the Hindus. So when the Britishers saw that the Muslims are being very hostile towards the Britishers, very angry towards the Britishers, they started to win over the Hindus, means they started to make Hindus their friends. So in a speech, Lord Ellen Boris said that the Muslims are very hostile towards the Britishers, so the Britishers should try to make Hindus their friends. They should be uh, having a policy of conciliation towards the Hindus. So the English began to crush the Muslims because they did not remain loyal to the British after they had snatched away their kingdom. After the Britishers had snatched away the Muslims uh, of their rulers, of their Mughal rulers, the Muslims had become very bitter towards the Britishers. Britishers realized that uh, we can never have Muslims as our friends, they are only our enemies. So it's better in order to crush the Muslims, we should close all the government doors upon them and we should try to make Hindus our friends and try to make uh, Hindus bring Hindus in our party. Second, Economic Backwardness of the Muslims The English tried to crush the Muslims in social and economic spheres as well. Not only they were crushing them physically, but in the social and economic sphere as well, they were crushing the Muslims because Muslims were economically backward during that time. They were not recruited to civil and military services. So civil services were not for them, the military were not for the Muslims. Government jobs were mostly reserved for the Hindus. So as we have studied in the previous point that all the government doors were closed for them and they were open for the Hindus. So most of the jobs and seats were reserved for the Hindus in the government, but uh, not for the Muslims. They were not even recruited to military or civil services because the Britishers did not trust them. The Muslims remained poor and unemployed. So because of this reason, the Muslims cannot get a job and because of not getting a job, they remained unemployed. The economic policies of the British impoverished the Muslims. So the policies that the British had, it only took away more and more money from the Muslims and they were completely in utter poverty. They found new opportunities in trade, industry, business or professions. So as a substitute, they were not getting any government jobs. So as a substitute, they found some opportunities uh, to work in trade, industry, business or in other professions. But they were not getting any government facilities or government jobs. Landlords and zamidars, whether Hindus or Muslims, supported the British rule out of self-interest. So all the landlords and zamidars be it Hindu or Muslim, they were supporting the British rule out of self-interest. Self-interest means that they were helping them, supporting them because they were getting something in return. The crippling of arts and crafts in village also led to poverty among the Muslims. So there was a lot of uh, decline in the arts and crafts in the villages. So that also led to the poverty of the Muslims because a lot of Muslims were working in these arts and crafts industries. As a result, the economic condition of the Muslims deteriorated, means it only declined. The economic condition of the Muslims were not getting any better. They, they held the British responsible for it and began to hate them. It gave birth to the feelings of revolt. So all the condition, this entire condition of the Muslims, they were totally economically backward. They had no jobs, they had no money, and this only disintegrated their condition. The Muslims held the Britishers responsible for their plight and they began to hate them even more. And this gave a feeling of revolt to the Muslims. Third, backwardness in the social and cultural fields. So not only the Muslims were backward economically, but in the social and cultural fields also they were backward. The English introduced the system of Western education literature and science through the medium of English language. So we all know that the Britishers brought Western education in India, Western literature and sciences in India, and the and these uh, education, these Western sciences and education were imparted through the medium of English. Persian was replaced by English in courts. So earlier the court language was Persian, but now Persian language was replaced by English. So not only the medium of education was English, but also the court language was also English. The Muslims did not adopt the Western system of education because they were proud of their own literature and culture. So the uh, Muslims, Indian Muslims, they did not accept this Western education because they thought that their 
literature and culture is sufficient they were proud of their own literature and culture and they believed that their system of education should be uh, for the students and not the western system of education as a result they remain backward in social and cultural spheres so this was this is the reason why they remain backward in social and cultural areas as well because they were not open to change they were not open to other systems of education they only confined themselves to their own system of education on the other hand the hindus adopted the western system of education and remain ahead in every sphere but on the other side what happened the hindus readily accepted the western system of education they accepted it and this is the reason why they were ahead of the muslims in every spheres of life because the hindus not only they have their own culture literature uh, education system but they also had the western and they were adopting their own as well as the western system of education so they were ahead in every sphere of life fourth british policy of divide and rule so this is another reason why the muslim league was formed as discussed above after the rising of 1857 the british treated the muslims most severely and brutally so as you all know that after the great uprising of 1857 the britishers and the indian muslims were very much hostile towards each other and uh, the muslims were treated very brutally at the hands of the britishers this resulted in the backwardness of the muslims in political economic and social spheres so this suppression and repression of the muslims they led to their backwardness in the political economic and social spheres because they were standing against the government so the government was standing against them and not supporting them in any way but the rising tide of the national movement forced the british to change their attitude and policy towards the muslims who were now too weak to revolt against the british so as soon as the national movement started there was this rising tide of the national movement the britishers changed their attitude they saw that the muslims are very weak now and they are so weak that they cannot revolt against the britishers so now they thought to change their policies they followed the policy of divide and rule one of the british politicians mount stuart elphinston clearly said divide at emperor divide and rule was the old roman motto and it should be ours so he clearly says that divide et impera it means that divide and rule it is a roman motto and he said that this was followed by romans and this should be now the motto of the britishers the british now became the champions of the muslim minority earlier they were against them but now they started to support the muslims because they know that the muslims are too weak to revolt against them but the hindus are getting strong enough to revolt against the britishers so now the britishers are switching sides they began to encourage communalism to sow the seeds of disunity between the two communities so the britishers started to instigate the muslims against the hindus so that there should be disunity among them and the two communities could never be united together because the hindus were starting with the national movement and the english knew that if the muslims will be in unity with the hindus that they will also stand in the national movement so that is why the britishers wanted to create disunity that the hindus and the muslims Muslims can never unite together. The English resorted to different methods to divide the Indian people. They presented the Muslim rulers as plunderers and tyrannical bigots to create hatred for them among the Hindus. Similarly, they painted several Hindu rulers as cruel to their Muslim subjects. So this divide and rule policy was uh, uh, implemented in various different ways. What happened that the Britishers presented the muslim rulers as plunderers that they came to india just to loot india they uh, showed the muslim rulers as invaders and uh, showed the hindus that the these invaders did not come to india for any benefit but they only came to india to loot them so this created hatred in the hearts of the hindus against the muslims and to the muslims they depicted that the hindu rulers were bad so this created hatred among the hearts of the muslims against the hindus so the britishers were playing the hindus against the muslims and vice versa 
In 1905, they tried to justify the partition of Bengal by telling the Muslims that Bengal was being partitioned to create a new Muslim majority province where the Hindus would not be able to subvert their interest. So we all know the actual reason of partition of Bengal that uh, Lord Curzon wanted to divide the Hindus and the Muslims. They were totally in unity in Bengal so he wanted to divide them so that he could divide and rule because a united Bengal, a united India would be more powerful and the Britishers will not stand a chance. So now when they started to create disunity among Hindus and Muslims, the Britishers started to justify the partition of Bengal, telling the Muslims that we were partitioning Bengal. The reason is right that we wanted to partition the Hindus and the Muslims, but not to end the disunity. We wanted to partition Bengal because we wanted the Muslims to have a province there where they would be in majority and the Hindus will not be able to subvert their interest means the Hindus will not be able to harm them in any way and the Muslims will be getting their rights will be getting their interest in their own province Hindus will be away from them and Hindus will not be able to cause any harms to the interest of the Indians the foundation of the Muslim League in 1906 was an attempt to drive a wedge between the two communities so this foundation of the Muslim League was only to drive a split a rift between the two communities by not letting them unite together. As a result, the Muslims began to support the partition of Bengal and called the Swadeshi movement a mere hoax. Means Swadeshi and boycott movement was started in retaliation with the partition of Bengal because the Bengalis did not want the partition of Bengal but now the Muslims believed in the Britishers that the partition of Bengal was done for the Muslims for the interest of the Muslims and not just for any other reason so they started to support the partition that yes Bengal should be partitioned because we need our own majority over there we need to be safe from these Hindus and we need to have our own province where we will be safe and our interest will be looked after so and they started to call Swadeshi and boycott movement a mere hoax means it's all fake it's all a sham they don't need to start all of these things because partition of Bengal is now being accepted by the Muslims the Morley Minto reforms of 1909 introduced the principle of communal representation in the legislature. So through the Minto Morley reforms, Morley Minto reforms of 1909, what happened that now there will be communal representation in the legislature as well. In the legislature, the people will be representing on the basis of their religion. Hindus will be getting their seats and Muslims will be having their reserved seats in the legislatures. So through this Morley Minto reform, even more disunity was created between the Hindus and the Muslims of India. Fifth, new interpretation to Indian history. Indian history was presented by the British historians in such a way as to arouse and foster communal feelings among the Indians. In the previous points, we have already studied that how the Britishers were depicting the Indian rulers, uh, the Muslim rulers towards the Hindus and the Hindu rulers to the Muslims. So this was one of this uh, method through which they are going to uh, divide the Hindus and the Muslims so the Indian history was having a new interpretation now and through this new interpretation of Indian history the Britishers started to create communal feelings among the Indians the Britishers divided the Indian history into Hindu and the Muslim period so the British rulers were the ones who divided the Indian history between Hindus and Muslim periods. In the Hindu period, they dubbed the Muslims as foreign invaders who settled here as conquerors. So in the Hindu period, they were glorifying all the Hindu leaders and they showed the Muslims as foreign invaders and they came here just to conquer and to plunder India. In the Muslim period, they identified the Muslims as rulers and the Hindus as a subjugated people. And in the Muslim uh, period, they showed that the Hindus were just subjugated people, they were just subordinates and the real rulers of India were the Muslims. By exposing and playing aloud the atrocities committed by individual rulers, the English historians tried to create hatred among the Hindus against the Muslims and the Muslims against the Hindus. They were telling Hindus how cruel the Muslim leaders were and they were telling the Muslims how cruel the Hindu leaders were. So by telling all these things, they were creating hatred between the two. The Muslim was going against the Hindu and the Hindu was going against the Muslim. All this created a rift between the two communities. So these things, this new interpretation to Indian history created a divide between the two communities. The Britishers and 
communal historians did not lay stress on the composite culture of india india is a very diversified nation we have diversification in culture and everything so the britishers did not lay stress on the composite culture of india but they laid stress on how the muslims treated hindus and how the hindus treated muslims sixth rise of revolutionary nationalism there is no doubt that the revolutionary nationalism gave great impetus to the national movement but some of their actions led to the growth of communalism so there was a rise of revolutionary nationalism it was good for the nation but it also led to some of the things that uh, give more credit to the growth of communalism tilak organized shivaji and ganpati festivals so bal gangadhar tilak he organized two festivals shivaji and ganpati festivals aurobind ghosh considered india as mother and nationalism as religion aurobind ghosh said that india is a motherland india is like our mother and nationalism should be the religion not the hindu or the muslims but uh, nationalism should be the religion of all the indians they laid great emphasis on the ancient indian heritage and ignored the medieval indian culture so ancient indian heritage belong to the hindus and the medieval indian culture belong to the muslims so all these people they did not lay much emphasis on the medieval culture but they laid more emphasis on the ancient indian heritage of uh, the country that how glorious india was in the past they identified the indian nation with the hindus and the indian culture with the hindu religion so they were they identified the entire indian nation with the hindus and the indian culture with the hindu religion because the muslims came afterwards the muslim came during the medieval times so they associated india with the hindu religion and the hindu culture they ignored the muslim role in indian history there was a certain tinge of religion in the political work and ideas of the revolutionary nationalists as a result a large number of educated muslims remained aloof or turned hostile to the national movement so when these educated muslims they saw that how india is being glorified hindu rulers leaders hindu religion culture is being glorified india is being associated uh, with a hindu land with a hindu culture and not much emphasis is being laid on the muslim uh, role because a lot of muslim leaders also came to india and they also gave a lot of things to india but that was not being uh, associated with india but hindu culture and hindu traditions so when these educated muslims saw they turned hostile towards the national movement and they did not want to take part in the national movement because somewhere they came to the realization that if they are going to support this national movement and the britishers will be out of india then these leaders will only make india a hindu rashtra and there will be no place for the muslims or muslims will only be a minority and all the muslims will have to work as per the hindus because it will be a hindu nation 7th economic backwardness of the country the economic backwardness of the country was also responsible for encouraging communalism in india it was not only the backwardness of the citizens but the complete backwardness of the entire country which sowed the seeds of communalism in india india lacked modern industrial growth and there was acute unemployment among the youth so there was no industrial growth because already the britishers were following the economic drain thing and uh, there was also acute unemployment among the youth there were a lot of educated indians but they were unemployed because all the britishers were employed to high posts there was a fierce competition among them for securing jobs so there were so many indians who were unemployed and there were so few jobs for the indians and there was such a fierce competition a lot of competition was going on among the indians to get these jobs it tempted the people to demand reservation in jobs on the basis of their sect caste creed or religion so this urgency to have a job this desperation to have a job made the people demand that they should get some reservation on the basis of their sect caste creed or religion it means that we are in the minority we should get some reservations in the seats we belong to the lower classes we should get some reservation we should be uplifted such a thing also added to the british policy of divide and rule so this was also very helpful to the britishers because they were already following a policy of divide and rule and uh, the indian people asking for reservations in jobs also was resulting also was dividing the people among different different sections 
both the hindus and the muslim leaders failed to convince the common man that the english themselves were to blame for their economic backwardness so hindu muslim leaders they all worked a lot but they failed to make the people realize that the english people were to blame for the economic backwardness not each other the hindu is not to blame for the backwardness of the muslim and the muslim is not to blame for the backwardness of the hindu but we all have to blame the britishers for the economic backwardness as a whole but the people who were so desperate so unemployed so in utter poverty they failed to realize this they should have told them that unless the british rule in india was ended their dream of prosperity would never come true as a result the communal forces grew stronger at the cost of the national movement so this feeling of removing britishers out of india was decreased as the feeling of communalism increased even more hindu muslim was going on even more they were showing hostility towards each other but not towards the britishers so this acted as a plus point in the divide and rule policy of the britishers eighth hindu hindi urdu controversy of 1900 in the united provinces which is now uttar pradesh petitions to the offices and courts were submitted only in urdu as it was a court language so during that time the court language of uh, the court language was urdu so uh, a petition was submitted that only urdu would be used as a court language the hindus for long demanded a change in this procedure finally on 8th april 1900 the government gave instructions that petitions written in hindi in devnagari script would also be accepted so earlier only the petitions written in urdu were accepted but there was a change that on 8th april 1900 there was a change that the government introduced it said that the petitions written in hindi in the devnagari script will also be accepted because there were a lot of people who could not write urdu so they wanted to write in their own language so this was accepted the muslims resented this directive and called for protest meetings all over the province so this hurt the sentiments of the muslims that you are giving importance to hindi as well urdu was the court language and urdu is supposed to be a court language how can you change that so it hurt the sentiments of the muslims who associated the only uh, urdu language with themselves and the hindi language with the hindus The Hindus held counter meetings, and the controversy continued for months as the rift between the two communities widened. So, when the Muslims started to resent this, and they were protesting and calling for meetings, even Hindus in retaliation did that, because Hindus somewhere felt that they had a right to have the Hindi uh, petitions accepted in the court. So, this uh, they also held meetings in retaliation, and this went on for months, and this only created more and more disunity between the Hindus. and the muslims ninth efforts of sir sayed ahmed khan the muslims remained aloof from western education ideas and institutions it led to their political social and economic backwardness so we all know that the muslims they refrain from taking western education because they were proud of their own system of education their own culture and uh, this led to their social political and economic backwardness sir sayed ahmed khan was the first to advise the muslims to receive western education so sir sayed ahmed khan was the very first personality among the muslims who advised the muslims to receive western education in the beginning he was a man of liberal views and a brave nationalist so in the very beginning in the initial phase he was a very liberal person he believed in the hindu muslim unity and he was a very brave nationalist he used to say the hindus and the muslims are the two eyes of the beautiful bride that is india so he personified india as a beautiful bride and he said that the hindus and the muslims are like the eyes of the bride that is india so he emphasized on the unity between hindus and muslims that india exists because hindus and muslims are united together and this is the beauty of india He founded the Muhammadan Anglo Oriental MAO College at Aligarh in 1875 to spread education among the Muslims. Edu- um, the Muslims were educationally backward as well, so Sir Syed Ahmed Khan wanted them to be more educated. In that, um, for that reason, he created the Muhammadan Anglo Oriental College, that is the MAO College at Aligarh, so that the Muslims can also take on education. its principal mr beck brought about a great change in sir sayed ahmed khan so the principal of mao college was mr beck 
and he brought a great change in Sir Syed Ahmed Khan's thinking and ideology. He tried to instigate the communal sentiments among the Muslims. So Mr. Beck, he tried to make the Muslims have communal feelings towards the Hindus. He advised the Muslims to remain away from the Hindus, the Congress and the national movement. Now he was also advising the Muslims, his people, to stay away from the Congress, not to be a part of the Congress, not to be a part of the national movement and stay away from the Hindus. Means he was creating a rift between Hindus and the Muslims from his own institution. He also advised them to support the British rule in India and receive Western education. Mr. Beck also told the pupils, the Muslim pupils who were studying in MAO college, that they should take on Western education and they should also support the British rule in India. That the Britishers are there for the benefit of the Muslims. That is why the Muslims should be supporting the British rule in India. He began to support communalism and Aligarh became the center of Muslim communalism. He also made Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan think on communal lines. So Mr. Beck made the Muslims of the MAO college very communal and Aligarh became the center of Muslim communalism, the center of all the communalist activities from the side of the Muslims and he also made Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan think on communal lines. He also made him from a liberal person to a communal person. Now for your assignments you have to answer the following questions. When was the Muslim League founded? Why did the British treat the Muslims with suspicion after the Great Rising of 1857? Why did they change their policy towards the Muslims later on? In what ways did the economic backwardness of the Muslims lead to the rise of communalism in India? Who established the Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College at Aligarh? Who was Mr. Beck? Why were the Muslims advised not to join the Congress? How did the Hindi-Urdu controversy become an important factor in the formation of the Muslim Leagues? In the next class, we will be continuing with this chapter. Have a nice day.